I got on Sirius XM, and then I had an hour show, and then everybody was like, Godfrey needs more than an hour. So I moved within 10 months to two hours. Yeah, it was called the Godfrey Complex, okay. like God Complex, and I was murdering. Oh, yeah, oh yeah. Black fact every day. We call it like Aflac, it was like black fact. That's funny. Boom, oh, yeah. we did that. I had black facts every single day. I said, we're not waiting for February. By the time February comes, you're not even gonna notice it because you're gonna be so knowledged up. Mm. You're not gonna need February. Love it. In the opening moments of the documentary, Black Art and the Absence of Light, the filmmakers present a 40-year-old clip of Tom Brokaw questioning artist and scholar David Driscoll's distaste for the term black art. Driscoll, who established African-American studies as a distinct academic discipline, tells us, when one says black art, it more or less isolates the black artist from mainstream American art. The black artist has not attempted to set himself apart. He has tried to be part and parcel of the mainstream. Brokaw recites a familiar argument saying, aren't you setting them apart by putting together a show of just black artists? Well, Driscoll explains the paradox of inclusion in art. Only because he has not had an audience with majority culture for the most part. And because an exhibition of this nature gets his work before the public. Had this exhibition not been organized, many of the artists who are shown here never would have been seen. So how much have things changed for black artists since Driscoll's trailblazing work in academia? Well, spotlighting portrait painter Kande Wiley may give us a clue. Having been commissioned to paint the portrait of the United States' first black president, Kehende Wiley created a provocative work. Yes, Wiley likes to polarize his audience, but in his defense, polarization comes with the job. He has gone on record as saying, There is a political and racial context behind everything that I do, not always because I design it that way or because I want it that way but rather because it's just the way people look at the work of an African-American artist in this country. So how can I teach my students about black art? Well, my friend Kyla Hannington hosts a show for Prince George's County Memorial Library System. And last week, she and John Williams interviewed Cole S. Manley, the author of The Unlikely World of the Montgomery Bus Boycott, Solidarity Across Alabama, the United Kingdom, and South Africa. This book is the result of Manley's master's thesis. And while Cole S. Manley is not an African-American, I do value his ability to tell black stories. So I was excited to get his feedback on how I too can be useful. Right, I know that we're almost out of time, but we do have one question that just kind of has snuck in here. And I'd like to ask, we have an audience question, which I'm just gonna pull up. Is there any advice that you would offer white historians researching the histories of marginalized groups? Yeah, so I, it's a great question. I think I've definitely thought a lot about um, my role as a white historian um, and uh, thinking through kind of my positionality, I think positionality is kind of a word that's talked a lot, talked about a lot in uh, history PhDs. Um, but um, you, I think you just have to, you have to come at the project very honestly. Um, you have to be aware of your position, your social position, um, and, and, and kind of be aware of the biases and prejudices you may have when you come to this project, um, you know, as a white historian, as, as someone who, um, does has you know has not is not from Alabama. Um, there was a, there's a process of uh, learning about a social movement where I felt like um, you know there there is a responsibility to uh, to center um, to center the black men and women who took on this struggle. There's a, there is such a danger in this struggle that uh, you know that's that was present. Uh, lots of people lost their lives uh, in the course of uh, this struggle and other struggles. Um, because of white supremacy. And so I think there is a very serious political project that's uh, that you have to be aware of as a white historian um, and, and also a sense of present day politics. Uh, that's something I was also, I tried to be very uh, cognizant about is white supremacy today is very much on the rise. Um, we've seen what's mm -hmm. happened in the past presidential elections. Um, there uh, are attacks on the Voting Rights Act that everyone is aware of. Um, and so there's these histories of the 1960s are very much present and ongoing. And I think um, starting my, the talk with John Lewis, you know, that was also a moment where I was thinking about the 
the role of someone's life and, and John Lewis and inspiring um, further, further direct action and protests, because ultimately that's what uh, will change uh, society, um, not just uh, reading about protests, but also participating in social movements.